Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise be to God. Today is a good day to die, you know. <laughs> and be resurrected. <laughs> In Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, that song that we just said, song New Wine. It is so prophetic as for what's going on right now. Because God is bringing the body, shaking everything that can be shaken. He's bringing the body through cr crushing. He's not only exposing the enemy because judgment begins in the house of God. And he's exposing everyone's life. Whether you're generic or genetic. <laughs> whether you're faithful, trustworthy. Whether you're willing to leave and do whatever it takes to let go of the old and grab hold of the new. Because you can't advance without cutting loose those things that are causing you problems today. He's looking for the place where his people, he wants to release a new flame of fire to each and every one that is willing to pay the price just like he paid the price. Amen? I'm telling you we're in the midst of it. We will come out of this glory victoriously. But things are going to still get crazy. It's not done yet. The attacks, the lack of food, the lack of finances, things are going to begin to crumble. But those who are in Christ will be blessed. Those who are right standing with God will be blessed. Their barns will overflow. They'll become warehouses and storehouses for those in need. And the greatest harvest in history will begin. But begins by us fulfilling the denial of self. The fight and the battle to pick up the cross and to follow all the way. Again, he's shedding everything in the body. Shedding everything. Exposing everything. Nothing's going to be hidden. Nothing. Everything will be exposed. So we are at a time right now where he's trying to, his purpose of coming, first of all, let me tell you something. Jesus not only came to destroy the works of the enemy, but to grant access. Access. Everyone say, access granted. Hallelujah. He did not come in some kind of religious motivation. <laughs> A religious act. He came in a military operation because he is the Lord of hosts, the commander and the chief of the eternal army of God. And he sent you in this earth, into this realm, before the foundations were created. He prepared you. He already chose you to be here. He knew that when you came in here, because you came from him, we came from him. I always tell people, you probably volunteered to come. But he said, there's something that's going to happen. You'll forget who you are, where you came from. And when you become born of my spirit again, I'll reconnect you and I'll give you a destiny and a purpose and a calling. But in the meantime, you're going to become a, of the world, born in darkness with a veil over your eyes. You won't know me, but you'll hear about me. But until those veils are removed, then you'll be able to see my motives and desires and my character and who I am. Because he is the great I am. Amen? Would you turn to John, the Gospel of John chapter 1. Right now, I see him in an area of, I don't remember the song, Dying Star. I don't know if you've probably been here when we sang it. By Jason Upton. And he's, he's, he's crushing idols in people's lives. He's destroying them. And he's, but he's giving the people the hammer to destroy them. He says, you destroy them, I'll point them out. But if you're not willing to destroy them, you'll be put aside until you're willing to. John 1 verse 1. Hallelujah. What's your idol? Is it could be yourself? Your spouse, your children, your job, your abilities, your talents. What's your idol? What's, what's priority to you? Hallelujah. John chapter 1. Is everybody there? That's good. 
Let's speak it together in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear the witness of the light, that all through him might believe or follow. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which God, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world did not, was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own people, and his own creation, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, and who were born not of the blood, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is on the only, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So he came again. Now he gave people, he says, look it, if you're willing to follow me. Now this is when Jesus was on the earth. Amen. The word became flesh. Jesus became it was the word that became flesh. And he said, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grant you to be my children if you'll follow me. But he did not grant them access yet. Does everybody understand that? Access to what? Everything. Access to all the promises. Access to everything. It wasn't granted yet. Because he didn't fulfill the purpose yet. So the access could be granted. So at that time, they could become his children, or those who were following him. Amen? And John 14. So the only ones that had access to him were the ones that were there with him. Amen? But they didn't have access to eternal things of God yet. John 14, verse 1. In fact, people weren't going to heaven yet unless God allowed it for that individual one to go to heaven. Everybody wanted to wear paradise. Verse 1, let's read it. Let not your heart be what? Troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going and how we can know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I want you to know right there, Jesus proclaims that he is the tabernacle or the temple of the living God. He says, I am the tabernacle. I am the three doors of the tabernacle. I am the tabernacle. Amen? The tabernacle of God. Now look at what he says to him. He says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except for through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. Of course, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. It is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I not been with you long enough? Yet have you not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who what? dwells in me, does the works. Why? Because he was the tabernacle. He is the way, the truth, and life, the three doors, the three chambers. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do in greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Again, 
Jesus proclaims that he is the temple and the tabernacle of God as the Father dwells in him. And he is the way to the Father, the truth of the Father, and the life in the Father. Th these are, again, the three doors of the tabernacle. You got the outer court, the holy place, the most holy place. Those are the three chambers. These doors are also known as veils. They were woven beautiful cloth in between each location. They build it when Moses, the Lord was directed Moses to build a tabernacle. And it would be known as the meeting place of God. Again, these three, these doors or veils were made of a cloth woven to perfection to separate each chamber of purpose and function. He came to grant access for all willing to follow him in the tabernacle. Now, everything revolves around the tabernacle of God and the seven feasts of the Lord. Everything, no matter what you look at. And when you begin to understand this and connect these things, reality will start hitting you more and more and more. Because these three chambers are also represented the first three feasts of the Lord. We'll talk about that. In Matthew 16, So you have the outer court as a chamber, the holy place as a chamber, and the most holy place as a chamber. It's all in the tabernacle of God. Outside of the tabernacle, it's called darkness. It's the world of darkness. Spiritually, it's called hell. Physically, it's called the world of darkness. The tabernacle is a portal. It is the only way home. Only believers can travel in the tabernacle through the tunnel of God. Unbelievers cannot access it. So God was coming to bring through Jesus access to him and to the eternal promises of him and access home. In Matthew 16, 21. Let's speak it. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples is everybody okay? Amen. That he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, Far be it with you. From you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Why? That's the requirement of the first chamber. Let him take up his cross and fight. That's the requirement of the second chamber. And follow me, which is the requirement of the third chamber, which brings life. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Hmm. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Assuredly, I say that there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus exposes and expresses his mission, a prophetic mission, an outcome. Peter was influenced by the demon to stop Jesus from his mission. It was an emotional attack. Anybody ever been emotionally attacked? I mean, emotionally manipulated? <laughs> it was no coincidence that the deny self, pick up cross, and follow our three requirements to access each chamber. Well, each chamber is connected to the first three feasts of the Lord. The first chamber is connected to the Passover. The second chamber is connected to the Feast of Unleaven. The third chamber is connected to the Feast of First Fruits, which is resurrection. Amen? Only be fulfilled by Jesus' death and resurrection. He was the only one that can fill these feasts of the Lord. Go to Matthew 27. What was he doing? Granting access. Matthew 27, 50. Many of the people in the world today are celebrating Easter. 
which is Esther, a pagan goddess of fertility. That's why they put eggs all over and paint them. Oh, let's just glorify these little eggies. Does everybody understand that? It's a pagan ritual. We celebrate resurrection, not Esther, which is known, comes from the word Easter. We don't paint eggs. I know people do it for kids, but now they used to gather around the table, and what they would do to, for the children on the Feast of First Fruits, they would hide things and gifts because that was a reward. They'd find it after they went through the dinner ritual and everything. Hallelujah. In Matthew 27 and verse 50, please. Hallelujah. Thank God God looks at the heart. Amen. Is everybody there? And Jesus cried out when he was on the cross with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple or of the tabernacle was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earthquake and the rocks were split. What happened? Access was granted. And the graves were open, and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Now why? These are the ones that had access to Jesus and his earthly ministry. When they passed away, they were resurrected. And coming out of the graves, and after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many men. They were giving testimony. I love it. Can you imagine grandma? There she comes. Uncle Joe, you know, whatever. All of these, some of these people that lost their children while following Jesus were resurrected and returned to them. That place probably went nuts. We need a resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. And verse 54. So when the centurion and those with him were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they greatly were saying, truly this was the Son of God. Well, you're a little late there, homie. But praise God. The veil of the tabernacle was removed because Jesus cleansed the way. Then he was able to grant access after his resurrection from the dead. And all that arose to him during his earthly ministry that died, rose and witnessed because of his resurrection. And now resurrection does something powerful. It brings restoration and reconciliation. So God was granting not only access, but restoration and reconciliation to all mankind to himself. He said, now, Access has been granted to him. Anyone willing to follow. Amen. What an honor. God Almighty the creator. Was granting access to me and you. And every day. Luke 4 verse 17. Remember. Resurrections brings restoration and reconciliation. In Luke 4, verse 16, what does it say? So he, Jesus, came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as it was the custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery. I want you to see this word recovery. Recovery. I mean recovering of something that was stolen. Recovery of a sight to the blind. Now this is not just physically, this is spiritually. And to set at liberty those who have been oppressed or been taken captive. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Again, Jesus released the prophetic written word before his death with the recovery and restoration through his resurrection and reconciliation through his resurrection to those that were physically blind and spiritually blind so that they may see the truth that was because their sight was lost in the garden by the trickery, of course, we know Satan, the serpent, that put a veil of 
over the eyes and the hearts of all humanity born into this world. So you and I were born with veils known as scales. Amen? Does everybody understand? Because Adam and Eve fell in the garden and their sight was taken. 2 Corinthians 4. So Jesus came to recover. That means restore it. Because at one time they had sight in the garden. And it was lost because they were tricked by the serpent. In verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, we have received mercy. We do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if the gospel, the message of the cross is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age, who's God of this age? Lucifer, amen. Has blinded. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. In other words, to remove these things. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See, in this, the message of the cross was veiled by the God of this age because we were born that way. It says we were born in sin. Amen. Remember, Jesus came to grant access and sight to what was lost. Because of the fall of Eve and Adam, but one... <laughs> But when one turns to Jesus, the veils or the scales begin to come off. It, they come off with the cooperation of the Spirit of God. Sometimes it can happen instantly. Sometimes it's gradual. That's why people can't see fully yet. In Acts 9, in verse 17, same thing with healing. Sometimes healing isn't instantaneously. Amen? Amen? Sometimes it's a process. Although we all love drive-through healing. Without cooperation, there is nothing. Now Saul, of course, was out chasing Christians, trying to kill them. And the Lord slammed him. Knocked him off his horse. Off his prideful horse. And in verse 17, and Ananias, one of the Lord's servants, went his way. And entered the house, and laying his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what brings sight? You got to stay filled with the Holy Spirit or those scales begin to come on again. That's why the Bible says, forsake not to assemble. Immediately, verse 18 there fell from his eyes something like what? Scales, recovery of sight. And he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Now, is that powerful or what? That's why Jesus commanded them, even after his resurrection. He said, look, and hang out here for 10 more days. I always tell people, to order pizza, whatever you got to do. But hang out here, stay in the upper room until you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, many people left. They couldn't wait for Jesus. That's, I believe they started denominations. Charles was trying to improve God instead of being led by Christ, the Spirit. Hallelujah. I still want to know where the first Baptist church is. I still can't find it. I see them everywhere, but I don't know where the first one is. Hallelujah. So he laid his hands and on and said, Lord, it's let me to bring sight to restore it because you are spiritually blinded. And Saul became Paul because he was able to see now. See, the more unclean things you touch, the more blind you get. More Rebellion brings blindness. Disobedience brings blindness. Pride brings blindness. That's why the Lord calls things, they, they become short-sighted. They can't see things through. Every one of us who was really walking in the Spirit of God, 
your decisions will have an end result you'll know about. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the what? The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are what? Perishing. Perishing means you're headed towards death. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the, the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. You know, all those who proclaim to be real wise in the world, they don't know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For the Jews request a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, invited, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing to the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Wow. Hallelujah. See, many are still refusing the message of the way, truth, and life, and they are perishing. They may accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but they really are not true about it. Because if they are true followers, they would be free. Does everybody understand it? They'd be free because true followers are free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. So there's a process of becoming free, isn't there? But without cooperation, there is no freedom. There's nothing but demon management. People are still managing their demons instead of being free from them. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Acts 17. What a price Jesus made and paid for me and you. You know, never forget where you came from. But don't live there. Hello? Never forget where you came from, but never live there. <laughs> Thank God where you are now. Acts 17, verse 29. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, Something shaped by our or man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. Why? Because repentance activates the blood of Jesus, which brings the cleansing and grants access to the Spirit of God. And once that comes, then you have access to all things of Jesus. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. <laughs> again, some people still don't believe in the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Nobody else rose from the dead. Muhammad, nobody. All of these rituals and all these false gods and goddesses, and they're all nothing but demons or fallen angel offsprings and Nephilims. Because people do not have the sight to see things through. They can't interpret the Word of God correctly. See, that's what the sight of the Holy Spirit brings me and you. The Word of God should become food to you. It's food. It's not a burden. It is food. So as you speak it, you eat it. Does everybody get it? So as you're eating God's word, you're becoming more and more like it. More and more light's coming. Demons are starting to flee. Heck, you could be fine one morning and miserable in the afternoon. 
Because something could be attaching itself. Something could be hindering you. You might have touched and agreed with something in your thoughts. All must come to repentance or fall under the wrath of his judgment. In Hebrews chapter 10. And that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing God's judgment in every country and every nation. But there's also the shaking and the quaking in the body of Christ. For new wine, new oil. Fresh flame of fire and more power. Hebrews 10. Let's speak it. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is a remission of these, there's no longer an offering of, for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter or to access the holiest place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Hello? And even a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking to assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Access was granted. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Why? Because we have access now. Amen? Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have made, obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we should first trusted, we who first trusted in him, in Christ, should be the praise of his glory. We are blessed with access to every spiritual blessing. To all the storehouses and treasures of God. What disqualifies people? Disobedience. Rebellion. Sin. That's why the success comes through consistency. God trusts those who are consistent in everything. Consistent, consistent, consistent grants access. Amen? And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 3. <laughs> Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it's not been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Ah, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sins. 
Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, and he who is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for a seed remains in him and cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Now that's very powerful. Because that's the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. Death. Resurrection. Again, resurrection power brings reconciliation and restoration. Recovery of sight. He who is in us is greater than he is in the world. And we can do all things through the Christ and the anointing of Christ who strengthens us. Amen. But there's that place of fellowship. That place of connection. And that place where we must get disconnected from our past. And from the idols of our life. And move on. Everybody wants more. People are asking for more when they haven't fulfilled what God's given them already. You never get more until you complete what he's given you. Amen? Then more comes. But he's raising up warriors big time on fire. We will be ready in season and out. You will see the shift and change of everything. The world is changing. It will never be the same. Never. And it's about to change even greater and quicker. Many people will be taken captive by fear. They'll be taken captive in the area of abandonment. They'll want to know where their God is at. When he's been there the whole time. He's going to get their attention because they're going to finally listen and hear. And the Lord shared with me the other day. He said, those who listen can't see. I said, what do you mean? He said, they listen, but they don't see. Only those who hear put the vision into, in, into action. When you hear, you see it and you put it. Hearing brings sight. Hearing brings faith. Faith comes with vision. It's not blind. <laughs> That's why there's no such thing as blind faith. When people tell me, oh, I'm walking out in blind faith, I say, you're an idiot. <laughs> Ain't no such thing. You're just walking out in assumption. You're being led by your emotions, not by truth. Amen? Praise God. It is a day of celebration and remembrance of the price he paid and where we came from and where we're going. Amen? He made the eternal port so you and I can go right to him at any time, in any moment, in any place. It isn't a ritual. It's a relationship. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for the price of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice and the blood and the stripes that he paid for each and every one of us. That we can walk in the spirit and keep the flesh crucified and be a sign and wonder for your glory and conduct and obedience and submission <laughs> and daily denying ourselves, picking up the cross and following that your name will be glorified wherever we go in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Praise.